Looks like we've got another display assembly to clean. Let's crack on. Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Beats Byte video. And this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at a Sony SL HF950. Uh, this is a PAL Seacam Ost. Um, version so this is a French C cam um so yeah it, don't confuse it with French C cam uh this is actually Austrian C cam uh, standard so yeah this won't play back French C cam tapes so common mistake of, often made with these that it's it, it is French C cam and it's not um so this machine um actually bought this off um Alex, uh, hi Alex, hope all is good with you. <laughs> and here it is, it arrived. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a really nice machine. It's in great condition. Um, I have given it a clean, um, but uh, yeah, it's really very, very nice indeed. Um, I mean, it did need a pretty good clean. Uh, but uh, one thing I was wondering about, there's some um, strange marks just very slight marks like something's something was on top of it sort of just across here so i don't know what that was about but uh yeah uh, let me know in the comments i suppose uh yeah so this machine is playing dead um i will do the standard checks uh you know we won't be <laughs> we won't be looking at the uh mains plug because it's a euro plug so no fuse actually in the plug um but we'll check the fuse at the uh the front end there but um i am 99.9 percent .9 sure that it's going to be the power supply um it's going to be those two transistors in the primary side and uh one of those caps if not both of them will be bad as well so without further ado let's crack on Okay, so first look, um, it's got the right type of battery. It has got the coin ones, which um, have a nasty habit of just leaking everywhere and rotting the board and the uh, the sled um, skate um, mechanism motor, uh, which is good. Fairly clean and tidy. Obviously, you need a bit of a dust out. That's that's fine. Um, shows it's been used, which is always good and uh <clears throat> yeah i think uh it should be a very nice machine um oh you just see the drum there there is wear there but it doesn't look too heavy um and the head chips on these are actually pretty pretty tough um and obviously the heads do wear out but uh you know i've seen quite bad upper drums on these and i'm still amazed how good the heads still are so uh yeah, so let's um, let's get this power supply out, and uh, we'll do some checks. So first thing to do, get this off. I know I've done this in other videos, but why not? Eh? Uh, and then two screws. Uh, on the side here, just literally the one screw, which it is, and then two screws on the back, and then there's a screw here, which you probably, well you can't see, but, but believe me there is a screw here, <laughs> and there it is. Um, so let's pull these off. And they are all unique connectors, so you don't have to mark them up or anything. And that should get out. There we go. So now we need to get this can off here. So this is the mains to uh, 12 volts. And two screws here, I know there's three, but that one actually is, um, is not 
attaching this to this. So it's these two. And then you do actually have to release this cord as well uh, because there is a guide that um, says screw there that actually locates onto this and if you try and put it out without it it can get a little bit, uh, a bit nasty so screw in the middle of those three screws and then a screw here Again, these three screws are just holding on heat sink uh, brackets. Lift out. And then you can see the connector there for the 12 volts there. Magic. And then this should come out then. That's any problem. We'll give that clean as well. Doesn't make any difference really if you don't, but I like to. So. Uh, unthread the mains cable and um, undo the screw. And this should push out. isn't wanting to budge at the moment. So, oh, it is. There we go. It's just a bit, not a huge amount of heating compound on that, I have to say. So, um, there's the power supply in all its glory. Uh, a bit of dust in there, that's fine. Uh, so not too bad at all and I'll give it a clean out uh, so there's the mains fuse um, those two capacitors there they're the bipolar um, capacitors 10 microfarad um, sorry 47 microfarad 10 volts um, I change them with uh, same value but 16 volts so 47, 16 volts. Uh, for the sake of completeness, I will check that fuse. Uh, what will also have gone is that ceramic resistor there. So we've covered this in previous videos, but you know, it's, it's always good as a recap. And uh, the way I do my videos, they're not really very, very searchable, are they? I will be doing something about that. Um, let's put that there. And doing some shorts and stuff that just have repairs of certain types. So I expect this to be good, which it is. And then the resistor. I can't remember the value of it. Yeah, that's open. It's open. So um, these transistors are going to be bad. Uh, so let's take off plastic. And let's just oh, cover it in silicon grease. I always do it. I never learn every time. Um, let's just check for any bad joints. Because occasionally, not often, you can get bad joints on the primary side of the transformer. And that can cause this problem as well. There's actually a solder splat there. Um, but no, they look good. So let's just do some continuity. Gosh, that sounds bad. Have I got voltage on this still? <laughs> I've been doing this with voltage. No, I was going to say, because they do have bleed resistors on them. Um, so I would be very, very surprised that I've not powered this up since I've had it. So 
Um, having spoken with Alex, I was com confident I knew what was wrong with it. Um, so... Yeah, short. 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 They're short there as well. Yeah, they're completely short across all pins. Okay, that's cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is take out those um, those two caps. We'll just check what they're like. Okay, so caps are out. Let's test the first one. And that's really okay. Um, yes, yeah, so are 3.3 ohms. Now, I think that is too high. Um, you get squeal at like 2.4-ish ohms. Um, so, yeah, it's obviously gone a little bit not great. Um, I would like to see one of these in less health than that really pretty confirm it is those um it is these that one's actually okay um it's not great but it's okay i'm still going with these being the problem um and what's interesting as well is the ceramic resistor actually it's cracked um, and in there, it is actually just a standard resistor that's put into a sealed ceramic, so you see the ceramic cement there, sealed ceramic um, container, if you like. So, yeah, that's, that's actually quite, um, quite interesting. So it would have gone like that. It's interesting that it has actually cracked. But yeah, there we go. Half what? 0.47. So. Yeah, there we go. Um, I've also desoldered the two transistors. So um, yeah, I'll get and change those next. So this is a bit interesting. I took out the um, 4.7 microfarad 350 volt capacitor. This is actually the capacitor that's between uh, those two bipolar caps, uh, mainly for access. Um, but I have known this cause problems as well. And if I test it, it's reading a bit low. So it's 3.9, it should be 4.7. And um, ESR, 0.97. Now, when I t first tested it, it was a little bit higher than that. So I do wonder if this is a little bit suspect, this capacitor as well. So I'll change it. I'll change it anyway. I do tend to change it anyway. Um, but uh, yeah. So transistors, um, again, from little diode. Uh, same ones I bought last time. So they'll have the strange, um, I say the strange, a slightly different um, casing. Let's have a look. The Sony ones are completely solid plastic right the way up. Um, so and these have a step on them for mounting. Absolutely fine. Uh, they press against the, um, the heat sink absolutely fine. We saw you want. And um, totally plastic encapsulated. These are genuine. Uh, apparently they're genuine. Oh, I don't know they any NEC. Mm. Oh, we'll have to see, because uh, they should be genuine NEC. All done, and uh, pretty good solder job. Um, I've just checked for any sort of shorts or anything else. Everything's good. Um, I even put the meter across these to check they're good, and they are. So uh, let's get this back together. So first thing is um, silicon grease. I, I've cleaned off the, um, the heat sink and I'll put some heat sink compound. 
Uh, this is quite old now, but it still does a trick. I reckon that's pretty perfect, so I just use a playing card just to spread it. Very thin layer um, because the contact is so good. And I am wearing gloves <laughs> just because that. Um, I will no doubt cover myself in lots of uh, heatsink compound. Um, so. Let's put this back in here. So this ensures the class two um, isolation. So the um, power supply is not earthed, or the deck's not earthed. And uh, yeah, and that plastic has to go behind uh, if you get it on the front there. I don't think it'll even slide in properly, to be fair. Uh, in fact, I think it's almost impossible to do. And you'll also see that um, this part here is, is screened. Um, there is mains or high voltage here as well, all along here, so you don't want that near that metal can. So, metal can. And slide this in. There is actually a bit of silicon, um, some heat sink compound actually still in there anyway. That's fine. Not too worried about that. Slide that in. And just clean off that excess bit that's come off so don't get covered with it when we put it back together. Short screw, I think, let me serves me right, goes there. And then the chassis. I was right. <laughs> and then goes back in, just checking it's all okay. Um, I assume it is, but we'll see when we power it up and start testing it. Assuming it'll work. <laughs> um, you might say I have little faith, maybe. Just cleaning off the dust all in there. I'm gonna be too thorough this stage. And um, <clears throat> okay, so that's in. I'm just making sure that the, the PCB, I don't want you to quite see, um, locates into the assembly there on the end of the, the can. So, longer screws. And these are the, um, the machine screws with the washers on. There is some adjustment on this one as well, so you can sort of get it properly lined up. Don't try and force this one in at an angle. Um, worst case scenario is you get little bits of metal break off the screw or off the metal as you, you go through it. And uh, you don't want that metaling around your power supply. It's not, not a good idea. 
Um, and then we have another short screw here. I think I've got that right. That's the way I usually put these back together. I should have really noticed it when I took it apart. And then longer screw there. And then very short self tapper. Clean. That should make a pretty good contact, I think. And then the bit I've done wrong is that mains lead needs to go under there. So I think I can get away with. I'm doing these. Well, you do need to do this right because it just makes everything sit properly in there. But I think I can get away with releasing this, even though there's that uh, that guide. And just sort of slide that in. Fifty fifty whether I remember to do that. Um so let's put those screws back in. A shorter one in here. I've done it the other way round, so I don't have to worry about adjustment this time. And then... I'll just tighten that back up. And that's it. That should be... A good functioning power supply. I will clean that up as well. A quick one to think about it, and I have no, um, mentioned this in a previous video, but this foam pad here, this is actually for the um, to assist with the um, the transit screws. So the transit screw comes through the back there and locates in there, and that sort of is the damper for it then. But this is just um, a sticky pad. It's like double-sided foam um, sticks on there. And that can actually come adrift. And what I have found is when it does, it, it fouls the end of the skate. And it will cause this to not close properly. So it'll get a gap. So if you ever get a gap or it's not really sort of quite performing as it should, it is worth just checking that um, that pad. You can see it goes, when it's fully in, it does go right the way up to it. Um, so it's a bit of a bump stop as well, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, it, it's sort of, when you put the transit screw in, it, um, it helps keep it nice and solidly sort of damped and clamped. So yeah, let's get the power supply back in. All back together, um, no problem at all. Stayed in nicely, good job, cleaned, done stuff. So the next thing <laughs> is to test it, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I'm sort of a bit 50-50 whether this is actually gonna work. Um, I mean, obviously we've changed those caps. That one's rolled off. And they're all suspect, but they weren't terrible. 
Um, I do wonder if there's something else wrong with this power supply. Um, I think if there is no oscillation um, from the control circuit of the primary side of the power supply, I think it will just not start. It won't blow blow those components. So in theory, it really should work. Um, and I'm happy it's all back together as it should be. Um, no bad joints or anything. So it should work. But um, like I say, a, a bit sceptical. So um, yeah, let's plug it in, see what happens. Okay, so here it goes. It's on. And no sizzling, super. Display is quite dull. That's great. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, view meters seem okay. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't happy, was it? Should try that again. Yeah, okay, so we've got something going on uh, with the, um... The, um, eject mechanism, but that's fine. Fantastic. So, I'm going to leave this one here. Um, it's just a bit of a sort of how to do the power supply, um, properly, how to get it going. Um... And um, I do actually have a really great um, upgrade for the power supplies on these. Um, I've got three coming from the US, um, sort of power supply replacements. And I will feature that in a future video. It's, it's, it's really cool. Well, I hope it is. <laughs> so with that, thank you very much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, and uh, yeah. See you in another video. Bye for now.